three to two. Benjamin, here is the ultimate test for Jan. He now has lost a couple games. Uh oh, he's playing a Kings game. I was about to say, can he rebound or is he going to tilt? He's going for I need to win right now. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is also what he played against me in Title Tuesday this week when uh, he was in a must-win situation in the last round. We see Magnus repeating. I think this is also what Magnus played against Hikaru Nakamura in Norway chess. Jan going for a knight of two. He's still playing super quickly, so perhaps he's looked at this before the match. And Jan, he returns to openings from his childhood, right? These King's Gambits. He plays the French defenses black. He's not afraid to play offbeat lines. But the problem with this particular opening is White's King is in the center. Rook G8 earned an exclamation point going to the open file. Maybe there's Rook G3 to come. And it just feels like black is the one having the fun, at least for the time being. Exactly, yeah. Black is easy development. Uh, the bishop cannot move out, the pawn on e4 is tender. So, I don't know, it feels like this this King's Gambit has backfired quite a bit. I, I remember also in Norwich chess when Hikaru tried the King's Gambit against Magnus. Magnus was not in trouble for a single moment in the game. He knows quite well how to tackle it. Look at this position. The g2 pawn is loose, so the bishop on f1 can't develop. The e4 pawn is attacked and also pinned, so not only will there be tactics on the square, and he was queen of b3. I'm still liking the look of rook to g3 because that also threatens knight takes d4 here. I, I just said it earlier, but now it carries an additional threat. Rook e3 check is going to hurt. This looks like another potential one-sided game for Magnus. I think if he just goes on the offensive, Jan is going to be hurting. Yeah, I like this move rook g3 that you pointed out. That it does threaten the move knight takes d4. It also introduces this idea of rook to e3 check. And the king has to perhaps go to d1. You can go bishop b2, but then you're in a pin. So it looks great so far for Magnus. The materials even, white is completely tied up. You cannot develop a single piece. And there we see Robert, Rook to g3. It's so unfortunate for Jan. He's pinned along the third rank. His king is stuck in the center. And when I mentioned Rook g3 several moves ago, it's just because that pawn is up on h4. One of the bad things about pushing pawns is you give away key squares. So black's pawn structure looks compromised with double f pawns. But Benjamin, we see that you get counterplay around it. Whenever you have double pawns, you have open files. There's an open e file. There's an open g file. There may be these isolated pawns in the f file, but that is not what's important. It's king safety and the aggressive intentions are all in black's favor. Yeah, and I already don't see what Jan should do here. Knight takes d4 is a very clear threat. Perhaps you have to move your queen, but he's just moved it. So is he going to move it again with like queen a4, but black just goes bishop to d7? Black almost has all of their pieces into the game. White only has these two knights developed. Your king is stuck in the middle. It's very difficult to develop bishops. So is Jan... perhaps already a little bit on tilt, Robert. And playing the King's Gambit was a sign to me that maybe he was. Uh, does he really believe in the King's Gambit? That's another question, but against Magnus Carlsen, I would not be playing such a risky opening. It's backfiring completely. As you mentioned, the, the pin on the third rank, if the queen moves, I don't even know where he moved to. If the queen goes to c2, for example, then knight d5 into e3 is just another idea that I could go for. Uh, the pawn on e4 is pinned, and oh my goodness, this looks miserable. This looks super tough for Jan, and what really indicates that he is struggling here is the clock. Usually Jan is up on time, but now he's almost down one and a half minutes on the clock. He goes knight to f3, hang the pawn on e4. Hang the pawn on e4. Can Magnus just take it? I actually like this decision. He's going to swap knights, I believe, and then he's going to try to tuck his king away. There's not another check in the position, but look at Magnus go. Bishop e6 giving up b7. He doesn't care about a single pawn. He wants to go after that white king. So Benjamin, he doesn't care about a single pawn. He wants to go after that white king. So Benjamin, it's all about timing, and b7 should not be captured. And look at this variation, Robert. If Magnus grabs his pawn on b7, Magnus wants to go rook b8 to take the queen. And if you take on c7, there's rook takes b2. And if you take the rook, there's queen e3 checkmate. So Magnus for sure cannot take this pawn, but then where is he going to go with the queen? That is such a beautiful line. If you can't take on b7 because attack is the rook takes b2 check, then you probably just have to move your queen to d1. No, he plays bishop to c4. Can you... I want to take it by knight e5, but I'm not sure if it works. It probably does. 
Yeah, it, it, I assume it does, because you cannot take it upon, it hangs up the queen on c4, and if you take it the knight, you hang it upon a g2 with devastating effect. So what do you do? Queen b5, but maybe then just c6 followed by knight d3 or, or <sighs> something. Yeah, that looks crushing, Robert. It looks like it's going to be a swift victory for Magnus. He's doing the right thing by calculating right now of a bishop takes c4 followed by knight to e5. It's very direct. It's one attacking move after another. You hit the queen. When the queen gives you a check, you hit the queen again. Oh, he castles queenside instead, and uh, I can hardly blame him. Knight e5 still a threat. The white king, not very safe at all. That looks, this looks terrible for white. Rook to g8 is coming, attacking the pawn on g2. Jan has, still has not completed his development, and his king is super weak on f2, so <clears throat> the king's gambit has backfired tremendously. The king has been gambited. That king is going to be stolen, and black is going to checkmate it, and it's going to be another win for Magnus. That would be three in a row, and I don't know how Jan is going to bounce back from that, but king's gambit is not the answer. And there we have the move knight to e5. You cannot take the d pawn, you hang your queen, and again, if you take the knight, you hang the pawn on g2, so... There's nothing here for there's nothing here for Jan. I mean, you're gonna have to move the queen, then black can take an f3 with the rook or with the knight, and black just gets a crushing attack, and black is even up upon him. Magnus takes a two 